Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. Hey. Hi, I'm Chris Williams, one of the directors of Big Hero 6. And I'm Don Hall, the other director of Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6 is a story of Hiro Hamada, a 14-year-old super genius who inherits his brother's robot. It was designed to be a helper. He's a nurse robot. Uh, but Hiro has ambitions of turning this, this healing nurse robot into an armored fighting warrior. And along the way, forms a superhero team with some of his brother's best friends. Catch him! We can't go against that guy! We're nerds! Trust me, I know about robotics. We can be way more. Anybody else's suit riding up on him? This is a superhero story where there are no superpowers. The superpowers are technology. And so we did so much research at the beginning, uh, looking into all kinds of technology, um, and, and specifically robotic technology, which led to the creation of Baymax, the healthcare robot. We uh, visited Carnegie Mellon, where we saw researchers working into bleeding this bleeding edge technology called uh, soft robotics. And that really led to the creation of our character, Baymax. One to ten. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your pain? <clears throat> Zero. It is all right to cry. Yeah, it's important to have a foundation in logic and, and reality, even if we're, we're pushing the technology a little bit. It's important to do your research so people feel that it's grounded in real science and they just believe it that much more. You know, it really became apparent when we saw the, the soft robotics that that would be our ticket to putting a robot on screen we'd never seen before. Oh! What's wrong with you? Low battery. You home, sweetie? We jumped out a window. Who's that? One of the things that our boss, John Lasseter, encourages us to do is to try to find something that people have never seen before. So if you're making a movie with a robot, he'll say, look at all the famous pop culture robots. Look at look at Wally, -E, look at C-3PO, R2-D2, the Terminator, the whole list, and then come up with something that occupies its own airspace. And so Don went on a, a research quest to find something you've never seen before, and inflatable vinyl Baymax certainly fit the bill and, and it really makes sense from a design standpoint because he's designed to be a nurse robot designed to help patients in hospitals and the fact that he has such a non-threatening look would really really be an asset because you don't want people to be intimidated by their caregiver. It's about 120 people in technology here of, of scientists, engineers, technicians building these tools. Our studio is about 900 people uh, and we buy some things off the shelf. We make a lot of things ourselves. Uh, we tend to make things where there's just nothing there that uh, we can buy that'll, that'll fit the bill to make what we need to make. Some examples in the past have been um, hair grooming tools and hair simulation tools for movies like Tangled. Snow simulation systems like we made for Frozen and all the way up to the lighting and crowd and, and uh, uh, simulation systems we did for Big Hero 6. We build tools that the artists use to make the films that, that we make, that people love. Uh, we built a crowd construction system called Denizen. We have a fast rig, uh, rig caching and animation system that we call Parade. Uh, we have a render management system we call Coda. And then we have a rendering system that we built that's a physically plausible rendering system called Hyperion. That was our, one of the bigger things we built for this show. Very early on, you know, I wanted Big Hero 6 to have a very cinematic feel, to, to have the lighting be realistic and the camera movement to be fluid and much like a lot of live, ac live action movies. And Hyperion was absolutely essential in bringing all that to life. Hyperion is a, you can think of it as a, a lighting simulation system where we put light into scenes and let it ray trace around inside scenes. It's, uh, the, the technical name is Global Illumination, but Hyperion is our brand of Global Illumination, where we're moving light around the scenes, it's bouncing off walls, it's bouncing off objects, it's bouncing into Baymax, going through Baymax, coming out the other side of Baymax. It's how we move light around in the scenes. And it's how we, the, that light eventually makes its way to the camera, we record it, and that's what we show the audience. You're gonna need some upgrades. And it really held up to all the rigors we put in it because we have a very rich world, a very dense world and it feels very lived in and, and we knew we wanted a lot of detail in the actual environment itself and, and Hyperion was essential in, in bringing all that uh, to light in a, in, a, 
in an easily renderable package. You feel, you feel the atmosphere, it feels very real. And, and that was really important for this movie where we had these really outrageous, we're telling a really outrageous superhero story and, and we're in a world that's, that's abstracted. And we wanted people to believe in, in the world that they were looking at. And so the Hyperion lighting was just so critical for us. The complexity of this film is, is far above the complexity of other films. It's, it's more complex than the last three films uh, combined, Frozen, uh, Wreck-It Ralph, and Tangled. We had to build a 55,000 core render farm. There's a lot of calculations. We're calculating about a million hours, a million core hours a night. That's a lot of, that's a lot of computation. Um, but we did it, and the results are fantastic.